Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone live here in Las Vegas for uh, IBM Edge. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Name. I'm Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. This is theCUBE. Our next guest is uh, Swame Koshalakata. Yep. Nice, got that one. Good, <laughs> with BNY Mellon. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so first of all, share with us um, your take on IBM Edge. Why is it so important? What's going on here? What's the show about? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a great time to be at a conference like IBM Edge, where you've been learning a lot about you know, some of the new announcements that IBM is making. But uh, to kind of uh, take a step back, in general, it's good to be in the infrastructure business right now. Uh, in the technology, it's good to be in the technology business, particularly infrastructure, because of the velocity of innovation. And if you see some of the companies like IBM, what they're doing, we're really happy to see the, the roadmap that you have and the announcement that you're making as much as the innovation that's happening in the industry. Are you impressed with the portfolio refresh? Yeah, absolutely. I think the whole strategy and how IBM is investing the dollars behind the strategy on the software-defined data center and some of the things that Jamie talked about, you know, having that uh, advanced compression that will help the enterprises. Absolutely. What unique thing would you point out, share with your peers out there around that they're doing the strategy with software-defined that, that's unique and compelling for IBM? What is the, you can point to like that, that lever, the differentiator? Right. See, oh. IBM had a lot of uh, research that was already in their tux before, and what I found it unique is um, the moment uh, IBM decided to do software-defined storage, and they were able to quickly say elastic storage, and they were able to take some existing ingredients, such as the GPFS file system, and use that single name space, and quickly launch that as a product, so to me, you know, IBM's ability to take the research that they have and offer that into products is, is, is my biggest takeaway. So Swami, I wonder if we could talk a little bit about um, what we're talking about off camera. This is notion of hyperscale. You know, right. John and I talk all the time in theCUBE, but if you want to know what's going to happen in the enterprise, just look at what Facebook and Google and Amazon right. are doing. And if you go back to what they were doing five, six, seven years ago, right. you're seeing a lot of the concepts seep now and bleed into the, to the enterprise. So, um, is the largest financial uh, services organization. Mm -hmm. How much do you guys track that trend, those trends? You know, can you bring some of those concepts right. in? What learnings are you bringing in from the hyperscale right. crowd? No, that's, that's a good question. We do look at uh, what's happening in, in the Google and the Facebooks and the eBay space. We really like the way they're using technology to solve a specific problem. You know, unlike a, a Google or a Facebook where they have to do one thing right, where they have to do the storage, they, where they have to do the search, they have to do the search at scale. But large enterprises, um, we have to do many things at scale. So for us, we're observing what uh, Googles and the Facebooks are doing and how they're using infrastructure to deliver the amount of things that they're doing, you know, half a billion users on Facebook or how many number that they are. Uh, it's amazing to see how they are applying and we are actually able to say what aspect of what they do in the data centers that we can apply in companies like us, in enterprises. The first lesson that we have done is we have a lot of developers and we work on lots of applications at the same time. What we have done is we standardized on how our developers use their development environment into one single stack. You know, much like when you go with the Google or Facebook, you get their APIs and their stack, we are standardized on how we develop our applications. Now that we standardize on how we develop our applications, we can deploy our applications at scale in our data centers. Now, one of the differences that we've noted um, uh, it, it, between the sort of hyperscale crowd and the traditional enterprise crowd, there's many, mm -hmm. right. not the least of which is the complexity of your application portfolio right. compared to this, but the hyperscale guys will spend engineering time right. to save money. Right. The traditional enterprise uh, is, is very much labor intensive in mm -hmm. IT, um, and they will oftentimes spend money on a solution to save time. Mm -hmm. Is that a mindset that will shift? In other words, will you apply those engineering resources like a Google or a Facebook, or 
Well, you look to uh, a vendor like IBM with the PhDs running around to build those products. Will that change? We are actually shifting gears in our enterprise where we're building everything with the open source. And like I mentioned with that single stack, um, what that would give us is with that single stack, if we engineer that single stack very, very well and put all of our efforts in engineering that stack that can scale, our developers can write to that stack and by that definition, what they build will scale. So gone are the days where we would watch things happen and go back to big vendors like IBM and HP to give us a solution. No, those, those days are gone. We are engineering and the revolution and evolution in open source community is allowing enterprises to do that. The guy at the, uh, another bank said to me the other day, uh, I asked him, what do you want from storage? He said, I want an open source object store that works. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you feel similarly? Uh, yeah, and why? Um, uh, we, we, want, we want everything uh, open source because mm -hmm. the speed at which that we would want to innovate, we can innovate at this, uh, if it is an open source technology as opposed to working with a vendor, being part of their uh, product roadmap, working with the product team is probably more time consuming than adopting an open source technology that has so much moment and uh, riding the wave of other people's requirements as well. So you see open source as a mainspring of innovation. That's what I'm, what I'm hearing. And, 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 and clearly. And, and is a, sp a speed enabler? You think yeah. it's faster? Oh, absolutely. And, 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 and clearly you can discern, I presume, um, different companies, different vendors, suppliers have different attitudes toward open source, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe talk about that a little bit. Specific to IBM, what's your sense as to IBM's commitment to open source? And for, from a customer standpoint, what's your reaction to that? Right, see, the core engine of the technology can be open source, but you need an ecosystem around that. So you could have a turbo engine, but you still need leather seats. You know, I, I think we look for um, vendors like IBM to kind of provide that management suite mm. around it so that we can actually manage the complexity of our environment when you deploy this open source technology at what, scale. What open source tech are you leveraging for your speed and delivery around value chain, the IT, all the things that you're doing? Right, so the single stack environment that I talked about, um, you know, beginning with uh, Spring Source, you know, Java Runtime, Spring Framework, you know, the way we use uh, our continuous build environment, uh, the way we manage our dependencies, all of that uh, is being done with the open source tools and now we are looking at the OpenStack, you know, OpenStack Swift implementation is what uh, uh, we're aggressively deploying um, and piloting inside the corporation. So definitely OpenStack uh, is the next big thing that we're looking beyond the application runtime. When and you single say stack. single stack environment, you mean versioning control and that stuff built into it? Absolutely, and the DevOps layer is built into it as well. So, so irrespective uh, of your Java developer, taking your application from the development environment all the way to the production you know, is fully automated uh, with open source technologies. So Swami, everybody always talks about the 70-30 mix, 70% it's spent on keeping the lights on, 30% on, on innovation. I like to look at it a little differently, maybe breaking it down with, you know, you're running the business, you're, you've got pieces that grow the business, and you've got mm -hmm. pieces that transform the business. Um, so, um, my question to you uh, specifically is, how do you fund new innovation? How, yeah. Where do you find the money to do that? Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. So from an infrastructure perspective, IT budgets are not uh, growing. You know, we are either flat or down. In fact, we're able to take costs out because of uh, the price drop in the, and the adoption of the commodity and the adoption of open source, what we're able to do is when we see a price drop um, in a particular technology or when we adopt a commodity, we're able to give some money back to the business and we're able to put some money back in the innovation in infrastructure that we're able to fund you know, this, this cloud environment that I'm talking about, that single stack uh, cloud enabled environment that we have in BNMLM was actually funded from infrastructure from our own run rate. It was not a top-down initiative where we basically said, let's do this. You know, we really drove the run rate reduction and used that to, to fund. And I think there's so much innovation that's happening right now that uh, for the next four or five years, I don't need to go back to the business and say, give me money. I can actually use my run rate and save the money and give some to the business and put some money back uh, in the infrastructure. So you'll, do a, you'll have a top-down budgeting process every year that says, okay, your budget's flat or down. Right. There it is, right. go figure it out. Right. So they're essentially running like any business. If, as long right. as you're under budget, you can spend the money any way you want. Right, and I, I'll, let me give you an example. What software-defined data centers do really take away the notion that the enterprise applications were used to, which is 
this is my server, this is my network, this is my storage. We're taking the my out of our uh, language. We're basically saying that everything is virtual, everything is automated, everything is elastic. We will give it to you when you want it so that you can be more smart about how you want to use it. Um, so a lot of the money that we are spending today in the enterprise is everything is over deployed. You want something, you, you expect a lot of growth in the next four years, we deploy the infrastructure today, assuming that that much growth is going to be there in the next four years. We're kind of turning the things around where if you program to the single stack and everything is software defined, we can provide infrastructure uh, when you need it, as you need it, and we can shrink our entire infrastructure down. Now, you're speaking at a panel tomorrow, I think David Floyer, our CTO at Wikibon, is also on the panel. You guys talking okay. about, um, I think you're talking about XIV. Correct. Uh, but so where does XIV fit in all this sort of software-defined vision and elastic vision that you're talking about? Right, so we are, um, we have XIV in our environment, you know, part of our dual vendor strategy. Um, and then we like the management and simplicity of it. Um, you know, part of um, what we like about XIV is the multi-tenancy that uh, XIV provides. Um, it's very simple to manage, which is uh, one thing that is very attractive for us. But more importantly, in enterprises, we have different types of workload. You know, at five o'clock after the trading is done, we run reporting, and after reporting is done, you know we do statements to our customers. So, what uh, XIV because of its uh, high multi-tenancy, it will allow us to have multiple workloads on the same machine without having to sacrifice the IOPS uh, for having multiple tenants on the same box. And you're using a quality of service capability. Yes, or? we do. Uh, how how much do you really push that? Do you use be a, you pin bandwidth, uh, uh, latency, or, or bandwidth IOPS and, and capacity we, to an application? Pretty much on the IOPS side. And you're side. sealing that. Right. So mostly IOPS, right. okay, mostly and capacity IOPS. obviously. Yep. Okay, and then you charge back. We we recover all of our costs. Um, we give all the costs back to the business, so we do recover all the costs. And we in the infrastructure are measured based on how we are reducing the unit costs down for our customers when we charge back. All right, Swami, we have to leave it there. Uh, so, John, take it away. Okay, thanks <laughs> for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. I mean, this is a great session. My brain's full right now. I've been just taking, tweeting away those, those sound bites. I totally love the integrated stack, single stack. Really, open source is the driver. Um, it's awesome. I think the issue is speed. I think that's one of the things that people aren't always that clear about and the aha moment for many is actually it's faster. Right, absolutely. And so that's the real innovation. We're just talking to folks with us on two chats right now. Uh, a lot of stuff happening on Twitter uh, around IBM Edge. IBM innovates really in the next open conference coming. This is theCUBE, extracting the data, sharing that with you. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>